Hey everyone, I've been wanting to record this video for a while. I'm happy that I'm finally doing it. It's about some strategies I've developed throughout the years to cope with auditory sensitivity. I know how much this can affect a person's life, particularly social life. Um, so I will describe my experience with it, how I found out that too much noise was one of the factors contributing to stress in my case and how I manage auditory sensitivity in my everyday life, including the items I use in each specific scenario, parties, shopping, work, and at home. I have my notes here with the things I want to say and my microphone right in front of me this time as I'm aware I don't talk loud enough. Thanks for the feedback, appreciate it and trying to work on it. Also, I put captions on this video as I had a friend telling me I have a very strong accent. Irish people never complained about that to me but I guess they're just too polite to do so. Anyways. <laughs> First, to make it clear, because I've seen some misunderstanding around this, people with auditory sensitivity don't hate to be around other people. It's just hard to be around people who talk too loud or talk all at the same time. People with auditory sensitivity don't hate music. I had people asking me, how do you hate noise if you're a musician? Noise and music are not the same thing. They are interpreted by our brains in particular ways. If you're interested in the subject, there's a really good book I recommend called The Soundscape by Moray Schaefer. I adore this guy. But for music, it's kind of the same principle as with people. Too loud, it's not good. Don't get me wrong, I love singing in a band, but I would probably approach in a totally different way if I could go back in time, with ear monitors and such. Although related to this or not, I never managed to have a big voice, you know, like those opera singers that you can hear outside of the concert hall even if they are not using microphones. My first experience with auditory sensitivity was back in 1996. I was six years old, primary school. The teacher lost control of the class, which is normal, kids are terrible. <laughs> They were all talking and yelling at the same time. I felt overwhelmed, covered my ears and started to cry. That happened more than once. I was bullied because of that. So I quickly learned it wasn't something acceptable to do, but still couldn't make sense of why it happened. I had no problem talking to just one person. I would talk too much even, but if there are two people talking at the same time, that was already enough to make it a bit difficult for me to understand what was being said. It took me a lot of time to realize noise had anything to do with this overwhelming feeling. I used to shake a lot on the stage, which I attributed to adrenaline, of course, but that shaking would happen when I went to concerts just to watch as well, or a party, any loud place, basically, and the way I coped was drinking. You can't feel overwhelmed when your senses are numb because you're drunk which is a very dangerous thing to do, 
especially if you're already dealing with other mental health issues. Also, that won't solve the problem in the long run because you can't be drunk 24-7. I still remember the last time I went out with this girl to a party and I decided I'm not drinking anymore. I left after 10 minutes. I couldn't stand more than that. It took me therapy, meditation and mindfulness exercises to figure out what were my triggers to suddenly feel stressed in a situation, to ask myself, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? What's the real issue here? Because a lot of times we feel annoyed and think it's someone else's fault. Like everything that people around you do is annoying. That's looking outside. But if you practice looking inside, you may realize, oh, I'm actually just annoyed at some loud noise in the other room, not at this person. And, you know, in some cases, the answer might be, oh, I'm just hungry or I need a nap. Enough introduction though, let's get to the goodies. Number one, what to use at parties, gym, movies and airport. This is the first etymotic I bought many years ago. It gained sentimental value because I wore them at the Epica concert here in Dublin. But as you can see, they are not very discreet. They are too big for my ears, to be honest. I probably bought the wrong size. But these are my new ones. Etymotic ER20 High Fidelity Earplugs. Sorry, I'm better multitasking. I bought them last January. Standard size, fit well, and they are very discreet. I love that because you can have them in most places and people will think they are earphones or if you have long hair, people won't even notice them. And these are great because again, they are high fidelity, made to use in music concerts, so they muffle the noise, but you can still hear music and what people are saying clearly. I had them on at the gym and I could hear my friend giving me instructions just fine. Two, what to use on the street. There is no easy choice. Regarding what to use when you are out in the city, most options will endanger you in some way. If you live in a small city, you might be lucky enough not to need anything to deal with the noise. I had earphones on since I was a teenager, living in a very dangerous country, and I guess I was just lucky that nothing ever happened, but you usually want to be aware of your surroundings. However, if you are crazy like me, I mean, if the noise annoys you so much that you are willing to sacrifice your safety a bit, these uh, earphones are really good in basically any scenario it's the um, etymotic 8f5 
and it has the highest noise isolation in all in-ear earphones 35 to 42 dB so when I still need to hear what other people are saying I would go with the earplugs but if I'm on my own I use these earphones without any music a lot of times just to muffle the noise because their noise isolation is so efficient and it really helps. 3. What to use at the office? At the office I use the famous Bose Quiet Comfort 35. Really nice headphones, Bluetooth, come with this case and noise cancelling technology. I alternate between this and my HF5 during work. The Bose is great to do video calls, but it has a really strong bass, which may not be interesting depending on the music style you're into. And also, if you're an annoying person like me, you might get the impression that the noise cancelling is messing with frequencies that it shouldn't in your favorite songs. It's probably just in my head, but um, to listen metal, I mostly go with my etymotic. Also, in case you're wondering, I don't use neither of these two record, edit, focus, or mixing, I use, sorry, uh, Bayer Dynamic DT770. These are great for mixing. I don't think they have a good noise isolation though, but um, that's me with most um, over the head models because I have a small head so they are always kind of almost falling from my head Four. what to use at home some examples of threaded enemies of people with auditory sensitivity at home are vacuum cleaners Air dryers, exhaust fans, washing machine, loud fridges, have one just here, and neighbors, of course. The exhaust fan where I'm living at the moment is okay-ish, but to use all these other mentioned appliances, I use these pluggers. It comes a... Uh, with this case, I broke mine, but I have these for ages now. Damn, son. They are awesome if you're a side sleeper and you can buy them at your local pharmacy fairly cheap. The advantage over the foam ones is that you can wash them and reuse them. They are made of silicone. And if you're willing to invest a bit more, I recently saw a brand called Flare that makes sleeping airplugs out of titanium. They claim that all materials other than metal do not filter low frequencies, thus doing only half of the job. I didn't try this yet because they are a bit more expensive, but it's definitely on my wanted items list because they seem pretty cool. Disclaimer, there will be better days and there will be worse days. Auditory sensitivity also appears as a symptom of anxiety and depression so be sure to check it with a mental health professional 
again the meditation and mindfulness might help to identify if the sensitivity disappears when you're feeling happy or if for example you wake up in the morning feeling well then go out and has your mood completely changed by sensory issues it can also be both if you already have depression this exhaustion you feel from sensory overload just feeds into it and makes it worse i had doctors dismissing my symptoms for years first saying i was bothered by too much noise just because i was a musician and then later in life as just a symptom of depression i knew it wasn't just that because i was taking my meds doing everything i could and it still wouldn't go away i talked to friends that had depression i talked to people online and no one seemed to experience this in the same way as me but no one would help so i had to figure out ways to adapt on my own you know the saying what doesn't kill you makes you a bit more traumatized and so after all of this i couldn't finish without saying allow yourself to take time to listen to your body and respect your needs i know it feels great when you manage to somehow act like everybody else because then it feels like you belong and everybody likes you but prioritize people in your life that understand you and like you even when you are your sober awkward self and might sound like an 80 year old grumpy lady i recently came across a page that describes the theory of spoons which i think is a great metaphor for trying to explain a bit about how it feels to people you care about i'll put the link of that in the description as well thank you for watching and again i really hope this can help bye